Today, I'm checking out Carbon, Google's successor to C++. I spent some time compiling the tools necessary in order to build projects over here in the terminal using Carbon. And overall, currently, it's not an easy process. At least there's minimal documentation and the language is currently in an experimental phase. So I'm going to create a new program. Let's go through things together in the terminal. You could probably guess what that new program is and that's hello world. So I'm gonna create a main.carbon file. So that's of course the carbon extension that you need and main since I'm used to doing this in C++, I'll do it this way. As you can tell, it's a brand new file. So here is where I'll start typing some stuff in. I know in order to create a sample program, I'm either going to have to use the sample package or the explorer test package. So I'm just gonna use the explorer test package. It should have a library for me to be able to print out to the console. So to invoke a package, uh, you have to do it like this, according to the docs. So they're using Explorer test amongst their test program. So I will too, API here. And then I'm going to create a function and then go through things with you. So let me write this out real quick. Function main, and I want to return something. And then this is everything inside my function. I'm going to print out, hello, savvy people. And then I will close that statement out and return something for the function. That should be enough to get us going. So of course, hello world is the way just about everyone approaches a new language to see if they can build successfully and display something to the screen or console. So in order to accomplish this, I had to build from source, which took quite a while. It needed a few extra tools, including Python, C++, and some libraries to get the Carbon compiler working. And this is all used on top of a automated tool called Bazel, which is a rewording of Blaze, which Google uses internally to automate their build processes. So let's first build things before I get into what this all is and how it compares to C++. Let me save and exit out of here. And the next thing I'll do is use their test explorer with Basil. So Basil run slash slash explorer dash dash and then my main carbon file. And look at that, hello savvy people. I've officially written my first carbon program and announced it to the world. So definitely smash that like button for me because this took me quite a while to get things compiled and running. And if you're interested, I could make a video on how to actually install and compile these build tools so that you can use Carbon Tool. Let me know in the comment section below. All right, now back to the Carbon main file. I definitely riled some people up last time talking about Carbon, so I figured I'd give the language a shot for myself. Let's review some of these things in here. So again, package just denotes that you're going to include some package from the Carbon base of libraries or packages. I know them as libraries in C++, so I might get those names confused every once in a while. Then we have main here, which says that it's a function and it's called main, just like you have in C++, this holds true. But the way you define a function here is instead of putting a return type, you just specify that it is a function with the fn keyword. Again, this is all my interpretation of this language. Things are changing. And there's not too much documentation out there and I'm sure it'll change. But then we also have something that points over to I32. So what does I32 stand for? Well, I would assume that's integer data type with 32 bits. So it's a 32 bit integer where we're going to be returning something and that return will of course be executed on this line and then we'll return with this keyword a zero to say that the program has exited successfully. Let's keep breaking down this code. Next, we have curly braces, which denote where the statements in a function exist, what scope they are in, much like C++. This is the entire scope of the program, so these lines get executed for this function. This is the scope of this function, and anything in between these curly braces gets executed as statements. Finally, this right here is print, hello savvy people, in quotes, and a semicolon, much like you would do in C++. This is a function call, and we're passing a string into that function call, that is hello savvy people, which then in turn processes the string we sent and puts it out into the console. 
I assume the only way we can use this is because of this Explorer test package having this print function. So now you understand how everything works here in this small program. Let's write another one, but I do wanna say we'll have to wait and see how well Google does with developing this language and if they'll successfully reach their goals in trying to make a language work well with C++ entropability, which just means works well alongside existing code that's made in C++, which would be a fantastic thing if they do get to that state. So you could imagine if you could write carbon code alongside C++ code, or maybe even existing C++ code, that would be a pretty fantastic thing, especially since we could have a modern form language to write that code in and the low level accessibility of C++. I do of course still have some reservations about the licensing of this free and open source project and what Google plans to do in the future and potentially maybe even profit or close this project off in the future. I'm not sure what the intentions are here from Google, but hopefully they will be developing and bringing a new language in good faith to us all. Overall, the language kind of looks similar to what you would find in Rust. Specifically, some of the functioning and data types seem similar. We'll see how that progresses as the language gets more developed. Let's rewrite this in a different way once again. So we'll do the same thing, print out hello world, but this time I wanna get a little fancier with this. So I'm going to actually create a string. So I can do auto and say equal and do the same thing. Hello, savvy people. And this is definitely something that's pretty cool about this language. If I create a variable, I'm gonna call that variable str for short and then use that alongside auto. We'll talk about this line in a moment, but now instead of printing this entire thing, I'm just gonna print S, then I'll take string, set it to something new. It's savvy Nick here. And let's see if we can print string out twice. I put S, I meant STR, a string. Let's see if this works as well before we talk about it. I'm gonna rerun the program and look at that. Hello, savvy people, it's savvy Nick here. So this time I actually created a string using an auto keyword function. So what's really nice about this is that the string variable automatically assigned itself a data type based on the information that you stored in it. So for example, if you stored a 3.2, that would be a float. If you just stored a three, that would be an integer. And if you stored characters, I would assume that would be a char. So a single character, I should say. And then if you have more than one character, you could store that in a string. And that's what this auto allows us to do. It automatically suggests and creates the variable based on what data type it thinks you're trying to pass in. Then we just printed the string like we did before. Then I reassigned the string to be something else and then printed that string again. So that's where the variable comes into play. You can keep reassigning it and printing out more things. So this is just another basic Hello World program, just done it a little bit differently and shows off a cool feature here being auto and how easily it is to store that automatically generated data type into a variable. Everything else remained the same, but what's exciting about this is that modern languages do this quite often, whereas older languages, including C++, up until a certain year did not have an auto feature which inferred data types for you. So one major thing I'm really hoping for here is a way to have a package management system that will allow you to download and install libraries or what they call packages easily with some awesome version control that will make programming in Carbon seamless and definitely separate it from C++ because C++ lacks the ability to have a package management system and has massive libraries that you have to link in and even build, which create massive headaches and make coding in C++ much more complex because it involves self library management in which today modern languages have a way easier method, a package management system, just like Rust does, that will allow you to easily add on libraries and packages to your projects, which helps you code them much quicker and not focus our time on meeting dependencies or adding those libraries in. The great thing too is it would make it much easier to deploy projects and switch programming environments in which sometimes a C++ project would require you to basically keep a system 
around just for coding or building on it because you don't want to spend the extra time adding libraries and compiling on a new system because something might have been deprecated and or you are missing some portion or sort of library hidden on the system. That's definitely another huge benefit over C++ if Carbon gets a package management system. Let me know if you're interested in going through more of these coding samples of Carbon. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in another video.